Okay, uh, my name is uh, Leonard Witt. I'm president of the European Archaeological Council. Uh, actually, the official name is in Latin. That's of course the compromise in Europe already. And my sign says Europe. I li really like that. I really like that. So. Um, but it's all about what can the archaeological community do to be more influent? That was my title. And, and you would have shown up anyhow, I think. Uh, first, some words about the uh, European Archaeological Council. I'll be quick on that one. That's an organization of organizations, uh, governmental organizations who deal with archaeology throughout Europe. We are active in, in 28 countries, but there are more organizations behind it. For instance, Belgium, you've got three. UK, you've got, you, you, you've got four. Uh, Germany, you've got 17. They're not all a member, but we deal with, with 28 countries. Uh, what we do is every year we have an annual symposium. The next one is in uh, Dublin. Then we exist 20 years, so there will be a feast. You can still um, send in uh, an abstract if you want to, uh, to to make a contribution to that subject. Okay, what we do more, we've got working groups. We are active on these, these issues. We come up with guidelines, we publish. Now, th these are all books, but now we publish uh, digitally. So, uh, uh, Internet Archaeology is, our latest two publications are on, uh, on Internet Archaeology. And we made some small leaflet so that the old-fashioned archaeologists are, 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 are satisfied as well. Okay, that's what we do. We've got our strategic document. That's the Amersfoort agenda. And there are all nice things in it. And actually, we're working with that document. So that is the European Archaeological Council, governmental organization, so uh, state agencies, things like that. Um, but the point, and that's my first point, when you're a governmental organization, that's something really different from an NGO. So the European Archaeological uh, Council cannot engage in, uh, in uh, advocacy. So we cannot uh, stand up for archaeology in Europe and make a point of it to politicians or whatever, because we, most of the time we are civil servants. But we, we can do other things. And we, but, uh, and promote that other people do. And that's it. And we got a real, really weak point in, 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 uh, in European archaeology. Who is standing up for archaeology to who? And that is, that's actually the, the crash course I want to take you into. Okay. Five steps became six. Uh, I just mentioned five. I said, my wife said, take five, and then I came up with six. So. Um, but at first, I, I'm going to, who of you thinks, think he, he know, knows a little bit about how Europe works? Sophie, uh, you should, you, you should say yes. Uh, my point is that, that it's very rare that archaeologists know anything about how Europe works. And that, but at least you should know the basics. So you better pay attention now because the, the, the basics are, are real. It's very complicated, and you can make it as very complicated. But the basics are, are actually are quite quite simple. Um, so understanding the system, understanding how Europe works, and then you might put your problems on the right table. If you, you've got, want to solve a problem and put it on the wrong table, you, you're lost and it's a waste of energy, so. Okay, I'm going to understanding Europe. Uh, these are the, the three most important uh, governmental organizations, the treaties behind it. They have all got their history, but they all will have one thing in common. They, they, these organizations started to, to, to come up yeah, after World War II, and there's a good reason for that. I, last year I gave a keynote lecture on that, so I, I won't repeat myself, but it's all about uh, prosperity, peace, uh, using culture and education, things like that, in order to have a prosperous world and, and to, to live in peace. 
the Pax Europeana. That's the main goal of, of this organization. I won't go into UNESCO, that's a world organization, but of course it's very relevant for Europe as well, and, but I will we'll talk about these two. So, this is the result of what these, uh, <coughs> these organizations produce. A lot, these are all treaties, a lot of treaties, so y y y your, the countries you come from, they you signed up. And so what is in these treaties, they said yes to that. To, to that. So, but who, who knows what is in these treaties? You, you barely know. But it might be important because if you know what is in these treaties, you might remember and you might remind uh, governments or, or, or governmental organizations what they have to live up to. For instance, the, the World Heritage Treaty, Almost 190 countries signed, ratified the World Heritage Treaty, and it's not only about World Heritage Site. It's also it says also uh, we we we're going to take care of the heritage. Read Article Five. Okay, I wasn't going into the, the UNESCO conventions, and now we see something peculiar. Almost no legislation or, or treaties. For the, yeah, there are lots of treaties under the European Union, but not for the protection of heritage. They are at the Council of Europe, and there's a reason for that. And you have to know that reason, and you have to understand that. Otherwise, you might get lost in the European space. Uh, so, these two. The European Union, that's the first one I want to talk about. Okay, uh, lit a little bit of legislation. This is the, the Lisbon Treaty, the Constitution. It's the Constitution of the European Union. And it has nice words for culture and cultural heritage in it. That, that's okay. It, it enhance and promote and, and, and so we, it's a good thing. That, and so that you can go to the European Union and expect something of it. But there's one, this, this sentence you have to remember. Excluding any harmonization of the laws and the regulations of the member states. So that's one of the principles of the European Union. Whatever can be regulated on a lower level, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a state level, on a country level, that's what it should be. And even the, the Euro European the, the Union doesn't have jurisdiction to come up with, with, with rules to protect the, the the heritage. It doesn't have jurisdiction. It says in its constitution, we don't have jurisdiction. So it's useless to go to the European Union and ask them to come up with, uh, with some kind of directive to, to say, well, we're going to harmonize all these different levels of protection throughout Europe. It's, it's all about subsidiarity. They won't do it. They don't have jurisdiction. And it's political, unthinkable that it will happen right now. I mean, with, with Brexit and all that. So, and of course, you could argue that the, the Lisbon Treaty has to be changed because of archaeology. <laughs> waste of energy. Waste of energy. Don't go into that. Don't go into that. That's, that's no good. So, that's about the, the, the legal part. Uh, but there are lots of things are possible with the European Union. Um, they come up with environmental directives and of course the cultural landscape, the, 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 the agricultural policy is very important for the cultural landscape. I mean, it's all about income support of farmers and what do we get back from these farmers? What, 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 we're supporting our farmers and what, what do they do for them? That's an interesting question. But that's also very big, the, 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 the common agricultural policy. Uh, but an, an illicit trade, of, of course, it's about trading. The, the, the EU has jurisdiction on, on trading artifacts. So there are the directives right now, and as UNESCO has a treaty for that, or two treaties even, and even the Council of Europe thought of that. So there are directives regulating illicit trade of, of artifacts from, from illegal excavations or, or antiquities from museums. 
And that, that's important, that the European Union can regulate that, because that is in the jurisdiction. But the other thing, then protecting your heritage, protecting your monuments and sites. Okay, but above all, what can the European do, Union do? It's support, come up with the European Heritage Year, uh, make recommendations of ministers, say, and there's a lot of money over there. So, uh, I know that lots of archaeologists through, uh, throughout uh, Europe, they live on the European Union, because there's so much money in these research uh, programs. So that's something, when you, when you look at these, these, these programs, use them, but you also can influence <coughs> what programs are needed in order to, to, to promote and enhance uh, archaeology throughout Europe. That, so, money, that, that's the very important thing that the European Union can provide. And actually it does, and it does quite successfully, and, and, and archaeology, I must say, quite handy. I'm not an archaeologist myself, but I'm always placing myself as the outsider. Of course, I'm, I'm involved 20 years now, so I, actually I cannot do that, but, but still. Uh, and there's a, a very interesting uh, thing going on since the Bruges Declaration and under the presidency of, of Belgium. They, they thought, well, heritage is important. They, 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 they came up with recommendations and they installed a so-called informal EU reflection group on heritage protection. And that is, a, a colleague of mine is in that and they are close to the uh, European uh, Commission and they're reflecting on all that, all kinds of directives who come from the uh, European Union and they might have. And actually they produced a very good paper on the, on the common agricultural policy because they're starting right now again with, with, that, uh, with that policy, with revising that policy. Okay, two minutes. Quest two minutes? No. Council of Europe. Oh, what can I do with two minutes? Okay, when you want to know about Council of Europe, uh, you have to know what they're involved in. I, two things. They're a very poor organization, understaffed, uh, but they can give legitimization to what we do. So you have to know their strategy, and if you come up with something, let it fit in the, the strategy. Well, how do you do that? You have to know that organization. That once in every year, this steering committee comes together in Strasbourg, and you can be an observer, EEC is an observer, and you can legitimize actions you do, and right now EEC is doing that. We're coming up with a, a, a guidance for uh, making, making choices. So, this this organization can come up with treaties. They're legitimized to come up with treaties. So you have to, you have to know what, you, the, and it's our home base. The Valletta Treaty is in, in, in Strasbourg. The, 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 the Council of Europe came up with the Valletta Treaty. Never think that the EU does. Okay, oh, seven steps. <laughs> I'll be short on that. Understanding the system, know what table you have to address. Uh, setting realistic goals. Uh, lots of my colleagues, they want to, to change the world, and they say, well, the market-driven system isn't all right, and they want to change that. Well, we're not going to nationalize all these, these excavation companies. Come up with, say, something like uh, come more money for important excavations. That's a realistic uh, proposal, but, but not changing the system. So, and keep it simple. Come up with simple Simple answer. Make coalitions, for instance. Uh, the agricultural organization, they might be interested in, in that agricultural policy as well, and they are interested in, in income. So you can make a coalition with, with, with them, and there are more coalitions possible. Okay, facts and figures are, are important, of course. Uh, I'm, I had the present, these are the NEARC facts and figures, but uh, we, we did our an investigations ourselves. And you have to present them to this organization and that works. 
then you, you see, well, oh, well, they're, they're important, and, and that's interesting. So who knows the NEARC uh, uh, invest? Okay, that's very good, uh, very sound research has been done. I like it, but what is the outcome? I mean, you have to present it and put it on the right table and say, and have the right proposals to it. Okay, so that is important. Hey, eight steps. Oh my God, I will never end. Um, timing, don't go to an organ. My uh, archaeologists in the Netherlands, they go to parliament when that's just been uh, uh, decided on the budget for that year. And then uh, one week later, they go to parliament. No, no. What the what 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 how Parliament works, and when you you come up with your proposal, if you don't do that right, it, it, well, it's a waste of energy again. Uh, attitude. What can you d stop talking among e archaeologists? Stop talking. I mean, that doesn't that doesn't work. stop complaining uh, all, all the time. Stop complaining about po politicians. It, it it doesn't help. They're human beings also. I mean, and, and treat them like human beings. And don't expect to... Uh, okay, seven, save energy. Stop talking about changing the Vlad Convention. It's just, it, it's a waste of time. It won't happen. But what we can do is make an analysis of what is, is wrong in Europe and what can be done about that. And then you might think of some legal means. But the Valletta, it's not going to change. Be satisfied with the Valletta Convention, it's all in there. It says uh, uh, archaeology is important, you have to protect it, uh, you, uh, you have to connect it with spatial planning, you have to provide <laughs> financial uh, things and, and, and cooperate on, on, uh, on an international level. It's all in there. And of course, you can, ref but you won't have up, end up with a better treaty. I know that. And try and do something. I mean, it can be very simple. But we're all talking, talking, talking among each other. But I know for 20 years now, I, I think two letters have been sent to Parliament in 20 years. Uh, within Dutch archaeology. Whoever sent uh, a, a letter, an activist, this should happen to a minister. Ah. Okay. Uh, whoever to Parliament. Okay, not bad, not bad. I want to read these letters and change the proposals into realistic things. Uh, uh, but at least do something. Do the simple thing. Do, don't think about what what. Do the simple thing. Just uh, uh, this might be a good proposal. Put it on the right table at the right time. And, and see what happens. So, and then, well, this might happen, but then I even got a bag, which is on it. And uh, you, might, you might fail, but at least you fail. And then uh, you might feel better next time. And you might be successful, and you might be surprised that people listen to you because you archaeologists are likable. <laughs> so, that's two minutes. Huh? Thank <laughs> <laughs>